Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Mark Sussman with Willamette Week. Uh, really delighted to be here with Tony Tringolo, who is the executive director, the relatively new executive director of GiveGuide, which has been Willamette Week's philanthropic effort uh, for a number of years and is one of the things that I think everybody who works at Willamette Week is so proud of. Tony, you are running world headquarters from your home somewhere in East Portland. Yeah, I'm in the Montevilla neighborhood reporting live from my unfinished basement where it's a rock in 62 degrees. So yeah, holding down the work from home front. Tony, we're going to assume that even though I think people do know what GiveGuide is, we're going to assume they don't for purposes of this interview. So you, you joined us when specifically? What, what month was it? I joined in July this summer. Okay. And you had come from a uh, fundraising, you had, you had basically been in charge of development for a, a nonprofit before this? Yeah, so I was the development manager at Lakewood Center for the Arts for the better part of nine years uh, out in Lake Oswego, it's a cultural arts institution. And then I was with Albertina Kerr for several years and I was um, specialized when I was on their team uh, within their development department for their fundraising events, which Honestly, it's pretty good training for GiveGuide, which is both a campaign and event kind of a structure. Why don't you give us the, the, the elevator pitch about what is GiveGuide? Okay. So if you're not yet familiar with GiveGuide, it's uh, Willamette Week's effort to raise funds for and to do good for local nonprofits. That's the nutshell. The bigger details are that it's uh, eight nine week campaign. It goes from November 1st through December 31st. And we have selected 174 nonprofits that are doing amazing things in eight categories. So you can find your passion, find the nonprofits that are doing work that you believe in and that you support. And then it's like one stop year end giving. And you can just support the heck out of everybody. And so your effort is in part helping select these nonprofits, all of whom are local. Mm -hmm. um, and my experience has been over the years, the focus tends to be on smaller nonprofits that are very good at delivery of service, not necessarily so good at fundraising. <laughs> so we're not, we're not talking about the United Ways of the world. We're talking about these small nonprofits some as small as only have a handful of people on their payroll. And what you do for them is you identify them and you vet them. And then once in, you build a website, right? Right. And I, I should say that there is an application process for the Give Guide. And 2020 is a bit of an anomaly. Um, we're doing things a little differently because uh, 2020, everything is different this year. So this year in particular, we invited back everybody that was part of 2019 to give them some fiscal stability, something that they know was going to happen this year that could bring good to their budget. Uh, we also expanded the uh, selection this year to include almost 30 more nonprofits. So that's how we're at 174. Those additional um, nonprofits that we brought in, they're doing really critical, important work in Portland for COVID response. Uh, diversity, equity, inclusion work as well. So that's this year's mix. Um, but yeah, we create an infrastructure for them. So we have giveguide.org. It's this massive website where you can find easily the nonprofit that you're looking for to support. And you can give as little as $10 to as many as you want. But let's be clear, this is a significant enterprise not to put pressure on you for this year, but last year, how much did GiveGuide raise for local nonprofits? A little bit over $4.7 million. Just a huge amount of money. Massive. Um, do you have a goal for this year, given that the economy is far worse off, there's great uncertainty? Yeah, so this year is terrible, but we're going bigger. So we're gonna go for 5 million. Wow. Um, it's ambitious, but we think it's well within reach simply because last year we had 152 nonprofits and we brought in 4.7 and change. 
this year with 174 nonprofits, we should have more people paying attention and people are, I think, hyper aware of the need and how critical it is this year, especially for those little nonprofits, because it's those little ones, the small and the micro size nonprofits that, you know, give guide is their donor acquisition tool. It's how, it's how they get in an audience this size, how they get on people's radar. So for those nonprofits that have like one or two staff members, this is huge. This is a big part of their budget for the full year. So it is important that we, we push hard. And then from the donor point of view, you know, as someone who's had the great joy of delivering the goodies that we give to donors to their homes and being able to talk to people who donate, mm -hmm. um, one of the things they love is A, the fact that we do tend to choose smaller nonprofits that they haven't heard of, and B, that this website that you and your team builds basically couldn't make it easier. It is one-stop shopping. You go to this website, you sit down with your credit card and you can pick one of 140 and be done. Sure, uh, or pick all 140, why not? Um, I have one friend who every uh, Thanksgiving sits around the table and he's got a rather large family and everyone picks one nonprofit off of the website. They've got their laptop open during Thanksgiving and they all commit to, to donating. And he said it has become this wonderful family event. Yeah, I actually had a great conversation with um, a 10 year old named Jasmine earlier last week. She was telling me that every year her parents give her an allowance uh, around the Christmas time and she and her sisters pick their charity for the year. And it is a very carefully considered process for her and her siblings. They want to find the thing that matters the most. And for her in particular, it was taking care of cats because she has four. So she found an animal nonprofit that really spoke to her. And that's who she picked last year. Oh, that's just wonderful. Now, it, I understand that you are going to have times during this campaign, which lasts for how, a couple of months. Right. So we start on Sunday, November 1st, and we go through December 31st. And I think you're bringing us into the big give days? Please. Okay. okay. Big give days are a big deal. Um, they are special days during the campaign where we will give you a big prize or you'll be entered in to win a big prize if you give. So the minimum donation is $10 to any nonprofit or a bajillion nonprofits. You'll get entered for every time you donate. And then we will pick a winner. And depending on the day, you might get a different prize. So maybe it's a $500 shopping spree at Music Millennium or at Powell's Books. Maybe you're winning a bike from the bike gallery or a backpack from Black Pack, which is made here in Portland. Um, we got an amazing array of things, a getaway at Skamania Lodge, a whole package over to uh, McMinnville. It's awesome. So Tony, other than the obvious, are there any other particular challenges of running an operation like this that is going to try to raise $5 million for 140 plus nonprofits from your 62 degree basement? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so logistically speaking, it's tricky, right? There's a lot of communications. There's a lot of people to connect with. Um, I think what's helping keeping this on the rails is um, I had one-on-one -on -one conversations with every single nonprofit over the course of a month and a half. Um, so these one-on-ones were just eye-opening to me as to what was going on behind the scenes at every single nonprofit. Like, how are they responding to COVID? Um, what have they had to do in response to the Black Lives Matter movement? What's changed since George Floyd's murder? Um, what's going on because of the election. So there's so much that they're all dealing with and they're responding in these ex extremely unique ways that to me, it's just a no brainer. Like we got to buckle down. We have to make this happen for them. They have made so many adjustments to their budgets, to their staffing, to their services and their programs. It's bonkers. Mm -hmm. um, and there's been a huge demand, like a massive spike in need as far as, especially frontline services, you know? We can't crowd shelters, so what are they gonna do? 